Hello Makers! Welcome back to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe, and today I'm going to show you how to calibrate an extruder the noob way. Stick around. Welcome back Makers! So as you've probably heard during my last live stream, I had the pleasure of uh, playing around with a Titan Aero Extruder by E3D uh, as it was launched last week. A kit was sent to me in order to try out for the Duplicator i3 Plus. Now, the kit itself contained a stepper motor and the stepper motor felt completely different in terms of smoothness to the stock stepper motor that comes with the i3 Plus. However, I decided to install it anyway. I printed the parts that were needed to install the extruder and I tried printing, but I, I noticed straight away that the uh, extrusion was, was much less than it should be. Now, usually what I do is I compensate by increasing the extrusion multiplier on uh, slicer softwares, because to be completely honest, I was, kind of scared of messing around with calibrating extruders. It, it felt a bit daunting to me and overwhelming to play around with those settings. Now, technically speaking, it's, it's a very simple concept. What you have is you have a stepper motor and it's called stepper because it moves in steps. And the printer itself has to know how many steps the motor has to move in order to well, extrude out X amount of filament. Now, if those steps are off, you'll either get under extrusion or over extrusion. Now, as you can see from this 20 by 20 cube, I had severe under extrusion. I, uh, the, the top layer was far from being covered completely. The side walls are showing a lot of gaps in between layers. And that's, that's usually a very good sign that uh, your extruder is under extruding. So I decided, okay, let me, let me try and figure out a way or find a way, an easy way to do this. Now, obviously the, the usual method is you get a few codes, the G code, you open Pronterface or Repertier host, you send a few commands to the extruder, you do some calculations and it, it felt a bit, complicated and it's it's really not but I thought to myself there has to be an easier way famous last words so uh, I did a bit of research and I tend to use um, matter control quite a lot matter control is a slicer by matter hackers and it's very simple to use what I didn't realize is how simple it makes it to calibrate an extruder so after printing this, I decided to um, record my process of calibrating the extruder and show you guys the new way, the simple way of doing so yourself. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you want to take note of the length of filament that is going to be extruded. You want to have a visual way of seeing this. So what you're going to need to do is you're gonna grab a measuring tape and you need to mark the filament at certain spots or a spot, just one. What you do is you find a fixed point where you can start the measurement. Usually it's from the top of the extruder. Now the uh, Titan Aero has a short PTFE tube coming out of the extruder top. So I'm gonna use the top of the, uh, the PTFE tube as a starting point for the measurement. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark two different spots. I'm going to mark one at 100 millimeters and I'm going to mark the second one at 200 millimeters. The reason for that is if you're doing a uh, calibration test and you tend to be overstepping the extrusion, the first mark at 100 millimeter might be, uh, might, might actually go through that starting point so you wouldn't have a way to measure how much filament has been extruded. So you get a second point at 200 millimeters just in case. Once that's done you open matter control and connect your printer via USB cable. 
you click on settings and controls and you click on configure next to EEPROM. Now, a pop-up box will show you the steps per millimeter on the first line, which is the X, Y, Z, and E. Now, E is the extruder. And currently it's set to 500 steps per millimeter. We need to take note of that number. Close it, go back to controls, and we will preheat the extruder to 200 degrees Celsius because I have some PLA in the duplicator i3 plus. Once it reaches the set temperature of 200 degrees, you're gonna to want to make sure that you change the length of extrusion to 100 millimeters from the set 10 millimeters that it's currently at. In order to do so, you go on movement and on the right hand side, you can see the E minus and E plus and underneath you have 1, 10 and 100. Click on 100 and then click on E plus to start extruding. So now what you want to do is look at the filament that the printer is extruding. You asked it to uh, extrude 100 millimeters. Now, as you can see, the uh, mark that we set at 100 stopped far off from the top of the PETFE tube where it should have stopped. More accurately, it stopped 41 millimeters away. Now, when you subtract 100 millimeters that we wanted, minus the 41 millimeters that is left, it leaves you with 59 millimeters of filament that has been extruded. Next, what you're going to do is you're gonna grab the initial 100 millimeters that you wanted and divide those by what has been extruded. And the result will be 1.6949. Finally, you're going to have to do one last multiplication. And that is you grab that 1.6949 and you're going to multiply it by the initial steps that were on the extruder, which is 500. And you're left with the result of 847.4576. Now those are the numbers of steps which you need to input in matter control. Now, once again, all you have to do is open matter control go to options and click on configure where it says EEPROM. And you have that 500 next to steps per millimeter on the E. What you're going to do is just type 847.46 and you're gonna click on save to EEPROM. Once that's done, all you're going to do is measure again 100 millimeters on the filament from the top of the PATFE tube, and you're going to go back to controls, preheat, and then click on extrude, and watch what happens. Now, obviously, it's best to do this a couple of times, just to make sure you get it right. As you saw in the last part, the uh, mark actually went into the PTFE tube and stopped about two and a half millimeters inside the PTFE tube, which means there is an over extrusion of 2.5 millimeters. And that's easily fixable. What you do is you go back into matter control. You uh, open the configuration in the uh, EEPROM settings, and we're going to adjust the uh, 847.45 steps per millimeter that we just did. Now the new formula is 100 divided by 102.5 because instead of extruding 100, it extruded 102.5 millimeters, that extra 2.5 that went into the tube. And we're left with a value of 0 0.9756. Now the last calculation you're going to do is you're gonna grab the current steps per millimeter, which is 847.45, and you're going to multiply it by 0 0.9756. And we have a new value of 826.78. Once you enter those, you're going to click on Save to EEPROM. Once again, 
preheat and also click on extrude for 100 millimeter. And this time we should get it just right. Now it's best to do this two or three times just to make sure you get it right. It's, it might not be perfect, but it's going to be very close enough for you to get a decent print. Now, obviously I printed the calibration cube again, and this time the changes were instant. You could see that the perimeters were filling up much better. The top layer closed off quite nicely. And when you compare the two next to each other, you can see that there is quite a difference. Now there is a bit of Z banding, but that's a whole different story, which we'll cover in another episode. But I hope that this helps you guys. It's the easiest possible way I found to calibrate an extruder without having to know any code. It's just a matter of knowing three very simple math formulas and you get yourself an awesome calibrated, well, Cuban extruder. So that is it for me guys today. I will leave a link to Matter Control in the video description below. It's available on iMac and PC. It's free slicer software you can download from Matter Hackers. I do suggest you try it out. It's very simple and very easy to use and doesn't overwhelm you with settings. That is it for me. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this noob way of calibrating an extruder. I will do more of these in terms of calibrating X, Y axes and Z height and all those. Let me know if you'd be interested in those. Thanks again for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. And in the meantime, happy making guys.